It's time for uh, today's perspective, and it is known by experts as an invisible threat, but one which is unravelling marine life, food chains and entire economies. That is the conclusion of new research on the critical threat of ocean acidification. As scientists are discussing the problem, they discussed it rather, at the COP16 Biodiversity Conference in Colombia last month. It's amongst issues at the Climate Change Conference COP29, which has just got underway in Azerbaijan. And with me is postdoctoral researcher at the Postdam Institute for Climate Change Research, Dr. Sabine uh, Mateus. Thanks very much for um, being with us on the programme. First of all, for those who don't know, just explain to us first exactly what ocean acidification is. Yeah, ocean acidification is the process that happens when the ocean takes up CO2. So everybody knows that the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere is rising, but um, what not everybody knows is that 25% of the CO2 emissions um, that we humans are causing is actually taken up by the ocean. And this is in a way good for us because it mitigates climate change. Otherwise, climate change would be even more extreme. Um, but it's bad for the ocean because when the CO2 dissolves in the seawater, um, it gets transformed into carbonic acid. So the acidity in the ocean increases. And this is um, especially for our calcifying organisms a problem. So, because these calcium, uh, calcifying organisms like corals or uh, snails or mussels, um, they have to build up the calcium carbonate shells or skeletons. And this gets much uh, more difficult when the ocean acidifies. So what general uh, effect is all of this having then on the marine environment? Yeah, so there, there are two big problems, I would say. So the probably biggest one is in high latitudes where water is colder. Um, there the, the water can take up more CO2 and therefore uh, the acidification is uh, strongest at high latitudes, so in polar regions, for example. And there, um, specifically, the small organisms are affected, like small plankton. And this is very important in the food web because they are the bridge between um, very small um, phytoplankton and fish, for example. So if you disrupt the food web, then everything at um, we call higher trophic levels, so fish and, and predators of fish, um, they all suffer the consequences. So can you go as far as saying that whole ecosystems are, are under threat because of this thing? Yes, especially because acidification is not the only problem. It is one of many problems. And for ecosystems, it's really difficult um, to face all of these challenge challenges at once. So they have to cope with acidification, which is bad enough on itself. Um, but they also have to cope with the effects of warming, um, oxygen loss, um, pollution, plastics, um, and overfishing. So there are so many um, um, stressors for the ocean that marine ecosystems have to cope with. And it's, um, it's mostly the sum of all that is a huge problem for ocean ecosystems. So those are the problems underwater. What does that practically mean for us, the humans who are living above the water? Yeah, for us, in a way, we are also part of the marine food web because we, um, or many of us, uh, like to eat fish and seafood. And many people also have to um, rely on fish as a protein um, source. Uh, so in, in wealthy countries, it's more of a luxury to, to eat fish. And in principle, we would have alternatives. But of course, other people uh, do not have alternatives and they, they really um, rely a lot on fisheries. What can we do about it then? What do we need to do to in order to uh, ensure that these ecosystems can survive? Yeah, the most important thing is to keep CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere as low as possible. So this needs to be considered in, um, in the talks about climate mitigation. We usually think only of um, how much CO2 um, can we take to limit global warming to a certain degree? But we really also need to account for ocean acidification and how that, um, well, leads 
at least partly as one additional factor to the destruction of ecosystems. Is there, this is the main thing we can do. Is there any hope, though? I mean, you know, let's let's not forget, of course, Donald Trump has just come uh, back into the White House, not just the US, other countries perhaps not doing what they need to be doing or, or putting the climate agenda high enough in their agenda. I mean, are there real ways, uh, bearing in mind what's happening uh, around the world, to, to combat these problems? I mean, in principle, there are suggested uh, technical solutions as... Um, um, putting alkaline solutions into the ocean that would directly uh, combat or to some extent um, counteract acidification. But this would have to happen at such a large scale that it's probably much, much more uh, difficult to, to realize such a technical solution than it would be to um, reduce our CO2 emissions. I mean, so even... reducing CO2 is really the most, I think we could do the most effective thing we can do. I mean, even at COP16, um, scientists pointed out only 13 out of 195 countries have even national ocean acidification plans. I mean, presumably, a lot more countries need to sign up and, and become aware of this problem. Yeah, exactly. And not only the decision makers, also the general public, because, of course, the, the decision makers, the politicians, um, they, they also take into account uh, what our society cares about. So I think it's important for everyone to, um, to, to get more awareness for the problems we have in the ocean and specifically also ocean acidification. Good to talk to you on the programme today. Thanks very much for uh, coming on, Dr. Uh, Sabine Mathesius, uh, joining us there. Me. Thanks very much. Thanks.